Would you like to grow more food, but then you don't have enough space? How can you maximize the space that you have? Hi, I'm White Davy, and in this video, I'm going to be answering this question. So first, you want to start off by identifying the plants that are most important to you because you do not have enough space to grow all that you would like to grow. And so you have to choose among the plants that you want to grow, those that are most important. Next, you're going to consider what size do they grow to? How much space does each of these plants require? How much grow time do they require? And with that information, you're also going to consider how much floor space or ground space you have available. When you're doing gardening to maximize space, you can do it indoors or you can do it outdoors. The choice is yours, depending on the space that you have available. For some, they have space outside where they can do a small garden and for some they don't have space because they may be living in a condominium or in an apartment building that does not allow them to have space outdoors that they can grow so i'm going to show you how you can grow more food with limited space so we're going to start off with vertical gardening because that is how you're going to get more out of the limited space that you have so if you are growing a vertical garden and some plants grow pretty big like tomatoes and cucumbers, squash, plants like these, you can trellis those plants, vine plants or plants that grows large that require staking. You can trellis those or stake those. And then for smaller plants, you can grow them into containers. As you grow your plants into containers, you're going to keep the larger containers down low on the floor or ground level. And then you're going to have the smaller plants above those. So for example, let's say you are growing peppers. Peppers usually require a five gallon bucket or a three gallon bucket or something that size. And so you want to put those, because those are larger plants, you want to keep those down low. Now above those, you can have your system set up where you have cabbages and lettuces growing above. Now as you are contemplating growing vertically, you want to ensure that your plants are positioned in such a way that the larger plants are not blocking the light from the smaller plants. Consider also plants that love the sunlight or any form of light for that matter and plants that prefer shades. So that is going to determine how you're going to lay out your vertical garden. It's also important to keep in mind how much of each plant would you need to produce each week to meet your need and of course you're going to factor in how much space you have whether or not you can grow the exact amount that you need or if you are going to be able to grow less. Now you're going to make select a certain number of plants that you're going to be needing for a period of time to grow. And then you are going to determine whether or not you can do succession planting. So for some crops, they might have a short growing season. Say for example, some lettuces may take six weeks, eight weeks to grow, and maybe you have an eight week or a 12 week or 24 week growing season. So then you can do succession planting. Now, when you're doing succession planting, you want to ensure that if this week, you know that your family is going to be using, say, five cabbages for the week, you're gonna plant five cabbages for this week and two weeks later, you're going to start your seedlings and you're going to plant another five cabbage and you keep doing it like that with the last planting. You must have enough space from the time you do your last planting until your growing season ends. The advantage of growing vertically is that you save space. 
and you can maximize how much you grow. Because whereas you may use, say, 100 square foot to grow 10 plants, when you do vertical gardening, depending on the size plants that you are growing and the amount of space that they require, that could be multiplied to grow 20 plants, 30 plants, 40 plants, even 50 plants. So say, for example, you are growing eight feet high with your vertical garden and you are growing things like cabbages and lettuces that requires maybe 15 inches in height then if 15 inches in, is what you require you're going to divide your eight feet by 15 inches to see how many tiers of cabbages you can plant so you get the point if you do vertical gardening in a small space you can get a lot more and as you do your vertical gardening especially if you're trying to grow what you eat with a limited space keep in mind the nutritional value of each of the things that you grow to ensure that in case of emergency the food that you're growing is enough to provide the various nutrients that your family needs and I know that I keep repeating this in my videos, but I find it necessary because a lot of gardeners will tend to grow a few types of plants. Some will prefer to grow just leafy greens and they don't really think in terms of the overall needs of their family in terms of nutrients. And with what is happening in our economy, it is very important to take that into consideration if you are going to be growing enough food to feed your family. So as you grow your vertical garden, you want to create a wall garden and there are various methods of vertical gardening that you can do. And in next week video, I'm going to be showing you how you can build a vertical garden. And in the few weeks to come from now, I'll be showing you different types of vertical garden that you can grow. So the next thing that you want to consider when you are growing your vertical garden is just as you would do companion planting when you are just growing in raised beds and in the ground, the same principle applies to growing vertically because you want to get the same benefit that you would get from regular gardening. You want to get that same benefit from your vertical garden and so you want to ensure that you're doing companion planting because when you do that each plant support each other whether it is by means of pest control whether it is by enhancing the flavor enhancing the growth providing nutrients that the other plant require so keep all of this in mind as you grow your vertical garden and i will see you next week where i'll be showing you how to build one type of vertical garden that does not require a lot of resources, does not require a lot of time, and it is very effective. So if you find this video informative and you would like to see more educational videos like these, please subscribe to my channel and turn on your notification. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have yourself a wonderful day. Yaman, yeah, a time for growth.